Well, morning everyone. Welcome, welcome back to school and welcome uh, to my assembly. We're in the hall here uh, to give you that true assembly experience. And um, yeah, I, I wanted to connect with you today. I'm 47 and I thought, what, what, what might speak to you? And so when I was preparing this at the weekend, I thought back to my teenage years. Do you know, the first thing I thought of was an image which has challenged me, inspired me, maybe even haunted me over the decades. It's my grandpa when he was 94, sitting in his armchair, talking about the old days. The last few times I visited him, he was very frail. All he could really do was to sit there and he would reflect back. I'll, I'll come back to why that was important in a minute. I don't want you to think, by the way, my grandpa spent his whole life sitting in the chair. Do you know, even when he was 92, 93, he had loads of drive to him. He's still, talking of driving, he used to drive his car when he was 92. Um, I mean, he was very hard of hearing by then. It was terrifying because he just revved the car like mad, dropped the clutch, took off like a rally car driver. Um, but that was when he was 92. When he was either 92 or 93, he was a really kind-hearted man. One autumn day, there were leaves all over the path and the verge at the back of his house um, and his neighbour's verges as well. And he went out there really old and he raked up everyone's leaves, their verges, the path, raked all of this up on an autumn day, um, heaped it up, set a bonfire going. Um, and yeah, he was exhausted actually, he went back in I think and, and slept in his armchair. But you know, what a, just to give you a feel for, for, for the man. Um, I mean, what happened next was certainly a little unfortunate because the bonfire, unfortunately, the wind got up, um, spread um, into his shed and that also caught fire. Perhaps even more unfortunate, the shed backed onto a massive wooden workshop of his neighbours in his neighbour's garden. So that went up as well and, and was a roaring blaze, which then started spreading to another garden um, by the time the fire brigade came along. Um, so, but putting aside, you know, the mass devastation, the, 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 the towering inferno, but what a lovely thing to, to rake up those uh, leaves. Going back to his armchair, the reason I mention it is this. I realised in my teens that maybe a time would come where I would sit in an armchair and where I would reflect on my life. And I wondered, what would I see? And my grandpa once said to me, son, all I can now do is talk about my memories because I haven't got the strength to create new ones. He didn't say it in some depressive way. It was a statement of fact. So my first thought, if I live to be that age, I'm in my rocking chair or whatever, will I think my life counted? What will I regret? That has been a challenge to me all my life since I was your age. I wonder if it challenges you. And connected to that, I was very lucky. I didn't really experience loss until my late teens, but in my late teens, um, couple of older um, family members and uh, a friend, girlfriend actually, in her 20s all died. And so this feeling that I wanted to make my life count so that when I reflected on it in my 90s, 80s, it would feel positive, suddenly felt more urgent because I thought, my goodness, you've got to seize hold of life. Life is precious, it's valuable. So that's another thought. And then thirdly, and connected again to all of this, as I was planning the assembly, I thought of one of my favourite quotes. I read it when I was your age, mid-teens, must have been mid-teens. It's from C.S. Lewis, C.S. Lewis of Narnia fame. And I'll just read it to you. I love this. I've shown it to some of you in an assembly before. This is C.S. Lewis. Every time you make a choice, you're turning the central part of you, the part of you that chooses into something a little different than it was before. And taking your life as a whole, with all the innumerable choices, all your life long, you are slowly turning this central thing into a heavenly creature or a hellish creature. This hit me like a freight train when I read it. And decades later, I actually see it as even more true than I did back then. Imagine the choices you'll make just today and tomorrow. And do you know, other things will shape you as a person, but your choices will shape you more than any single factor into who you become. Where am I going with this assembly then at the beginning of a new term and a new year? How could this apply to you? Let me give you two examples. A few years ago, our head girl was Evie, Evie Venix, um, and do you know, I, I rang home the evening that she'd become head girl 
and um, I wanted to speak to her to congratulate her and I ended up getting her mum actually. The first thing her mum said is, do you know, Evie wouldn't have said boo to a goose when she was in year seven. Now don't get me wrong, I don't think Evie went around chatting to geese all the time, but you get the idea. She was very, very timid in year seven, all of her teachers would say the same. She ended up as our head girl, a really good head girl. How did that happen? Well, um, I dug out one of her speeches um, at the weekend. It was an open evening speech, and I'm just gonna read it to you now, because this gives you a sense of, of sort of, you know, who she was and who she became. When I first came to Challoners High six years ago, I was shy, quiet, and lacking in confidence, although you might not believe me today. Evie went on to say, if you'd asked 11-year-old me to stand up here, I'm pretty sure she would have hidden behind this lectern. Challoners has given me lots of different opportunities over the years which have led to where I am today. This is one of my challenges for you today. There are so many opportunities that lie ahead today, tomorrow, uh, next term, uh, next year. Are you going to grab hold of those? Because each decision you make to shy away or to grab hold is going to change you. And Evie, year seven, do you know, she told me the first step she took that terrified her was to organise a scrapbook for her year seven form. And you've got to say, it's not a big deal. It really terrified her. She had the idea, she didn't mention it to anyone for days. Then she mentioned it to her best friend, who said, that's a good idea, tell the class. She got the courage, she did it, she organised it, produced a great scrapbook, everyone loved it. Gave her a bit of confidence. Do you know, two years later, she organised a big charity event in the school, and she stood here and she did an assembly, and she said she was so terrified she wanted to run away before the assembly, she did it. And do you know, she actually realised it went quite well and people said you've got a gift for public speaking, she had. That was year nine. Year 11, I'm just skipping through, there are so many decisions she made that shaped her. By year 11, she actually organised an amazing fashion show, a recycled fashion show, took control of it, big school event, and year 12 became head girl. I wonder what choices you'll make and how they will shape you and change you. Another small example, um, when I joined the school, I had a GCSE class for year 10 and then year 11, so we're talking about five years ago. Um, and I just want to talk about two girls in that class, Nikki and Paris. Nikki, um, bright girl, like you all are, very capable. Geography didn't come easy to her. Um, I was her teacher, so <laughs> I guess perhaps uh, I was partly to blame. I did my best for her. She was very low on confidence in, in geography. In year 11 particularly, her mate that she always sat next to, Paris, one lesson a week, um, backed into lunchtime would help Nikki. Do you know, she was so lovely to Nikki. She would explain things, helped her with some guidance on her coursework, um, and built her up and built up her confidence. Nikki, early year 11, was heading for a C, maybe a B if things went well. She got an A grade at GCSE, but she got more than that. She got more than that. She had the care of a friend who put a huge amount of time into her. Do you know, I often think love is spelled T-I-M-E. Nikki would have left knowing someone cared enough to pour all that time onto her. And what about Paris? Well, my goodness, I told her at the end she should become a teacher. As that year went on, she got better and better at mentoring and teaching. She grew as a person. I bet that changed her. I bet she's still doing that sort of thing for others now. It shapes her, it changed who she is. Talking of shaping, our school motto is shape the world. It's not some sort of ginger, cautious, well, you might consider shaping the world, girls, if you want to. We think of it as an imperative, and what I mean by that is it's an instruction. We expect you to grow and to shape the world now and into the future, but those choices you make are gonna shape who you are and how you might then go on to make a really positive difference in society. Um, there's a quote, I don't know whether you can see it or not, on the board there. Um, it's from good old Professor Dumbledore of Harry Potter fame. It matters not what someone is born. It matters not what someone is born, but what they grow to be. This term lays ahead of us. Innumerable choices are there for you to make. I would challenge you to think about who you're going to become how you're going to shape society and I would encourage you to charge through the fear, grab hold of life, take those opportunities and grow to be someone that makes a really positive difference in our society. I tell you this, our world really needs people.
people that are willing to shape it and make a difference.